Hello and welcome back to 100 pound photography. I finally got around to doing it. It is the Olympus E410 10 megapixel four thirds camera. It's taken me a while to do this unfortunately for other commitments but also this is about the fourth attempt to try to make this video because I wanted to try and give this camera a, a fair review. Um, I did find it difficult to be perfectly honest but I'm going to leave my actual proper conclusion of this right to the end. So if you are interested, please watch through to the very end. Okay, so the camera itself, it was released back in 2007. Uh, this was actually the sort of replacement for the E400, which came out, was released in 2006. But that wasn't released worldwide. Unfortunately, North America missed out on that. So when Olympus released this, they did release it worldwide. First thing you might notice about this camera is it is incredibly light. It is a DSLR, not a mirrorless, it is a DSLR camera and then weight this with the battery is 435 grams. That's it. Most lenses weigh more than this. Even with a lens this is probably lighter than most other DSLRs. So that is a huge plus factor to this camera is that it is so light. It is ridiculously light. I can't. It's yeah. I'm going to stop going on a bit because it's just just take my word for it. It's really really light. Uh, the, if you are used to DSLR cameras, it, you will notice that this camera does not have a proper hand grip. Most DSLRs, or in fact, pretty much all the ones I've come across with, will have something big and chunky sticking out here, so you can grip it. Partly due to ergonomics, but partly also due to get all the, the electronics and stuff inside it and the battery they need to have space for it. Olympus with this, they decided not to do that. They decided, wanted to keep it looking like a film camera. And it does look like a film camera because it's more sort of a re the usual rectangle shape that is familiar with normal SLR photography. Personally, I don't like that, but that's because I am used to DSLRs. I'm used to that big chunky hand grip. So moving on from that, uh, it, the body is completely plastic and it, it feels it. It's not great plastic. Um, unfortunately, this is a very beat up example. Um, cause when I got it, I did buy it through eBay. I was lucky I got two lenses with it, but also I got I, I, that's the original owner left in the CF card. Um, and I know this has had quite an extensive life because they, they left pictures on it and this camera has been to Egypt. So that part, probably partly explains the reason why the, the rubber grip is coming off. It probably didn't cope very well with the hot weather. But apart from that, this, so this is what, this is, I have a 14 years old camera, probably a bit older than that now, my mass is terrible. Um, and it still works, still works fine for the most part. Um, the only issues I've had with it is obviously the grip I've just mentioned. But also, yeah, I do have a problem when I turn it on that sometimes it thinks that the, but the card reader, the, the CF card door is open when it actually is closed, but again, not too bad considering its age. Now I'm going to start with the negative sides because oh, let's get those out of the way. I've already mentioned the lack of grip. To me, I don't like that. It's, as I say, it's, I'm used to something else. Ideally, if you've got smaller hands, but if you have got big hands, you probably will, might struggle with that. The dynamic range on this isn't very good. But considering when it was released, it was still very much at the forefront of uh, digital cameras coming out. And the camera manufacturers at the time were experimenting with lots of different things. And also the technology wasn't really there to make it exceptional for that time. Obviously now cameras have moved on and fantastic, brilliant. But for this camera, no, the diamond range ain't good. It has got a very short battery life. Um, I've found that I've had to stop using it when out on a trip because I've just simply run out of battery. That could be down to the battery itself, but I don't think it is. I, I have read reviews saying that the battery life on these weren't great when they were new anyway. It is incredibly slow on startup. Um, that I find really frustrating. I'll demonstrate that to you here. Um, which, if you're wanting to take get your camera out quickly or move it to take a shot, you've missed it. Uh, the other downside to this camera, even for the day that this was released, that is incredibly 1980s looking display there. It, I, 
they could have done a lot better with that. They're not alone in this because obviously in my other reviews I've done a Pentax. They have a very dated system at this time as well and some of the other manufacturers look a lot better. That looks terrible. It really is. They spent, I think they spent all their time and development in trying to get it as light as possible when they could have just spent a little bit longer, another five minutes or so trying to make a more exciting display on it. That being said, however, it is very easy to navigate around, but then there aren't a lot of menu options on this. On the positives, it does have, for its age, very good noise control. I found that, yes, it's 10 megapixels, so it's live MOS, which was a very new sense technology at the time. It is very good control of the noise that you get through it. You still can't bump the ISO very high because obviously no, no ISO, no cameras at this age had good great ISO performance of what we expect now. It does have its own dust removal system. Now Olympus called it a sonic, supersonic wave thing, SSWF, which comes on every time you turn the camera on. It does have live view, so you don't have to put it up to your view to your eye to, to compose your shots. It's not touch screen, so you can't focus with it with live view, but you can still focus your set up your shots with live view. So if you are someone who doesn't like putting the camera to your face, that's brilliant for you. I'm going to wrap this up now because it started raining and it's been hammering it down all day. Would I recommend this camera? Unfortunately, I wouldn't, no. I would, however, recommend the ones that came after this. I think there's something like the E520. Now, that is what I would like to get hold of, but I think it might have just gone up a little bit in value, so it might push it out of the remit of, of this channel. But this particular camera, the E410, no, I don't recommend this one. If you do want to go down this road and have a really light DSLR, do try and get one of the latest siblings of this one. That's basically it. Um, as I say, I can't, I can't recommend this camera. I wanted to because I have had other Olympus mirrorless micro four thirds camera and they are just truly amazing even though even if they do have a horrible menu system but the cameras themselves are fantastic like I said, this one sorry olympus i can't recommend it um i mean if you really want to buy one then, then feel free i mean but like i say i i can't recommend this one and i don't want to recommend it i think there's better cameras out there than this um yeah so Sorry, if you were expecting me to like this camera or expecting me to like every camera, I'm not going to like every camera. And I want to recommend ones that are suitable for, for people that maybe are starting their photography journey. Okay, thank you very much for watching. Please do like and subscribe. It does mean a lot to me if you do. Uh, it just tells me there's other people out there that are interested in, in the cheaper cameras and the older cameras. And it means that I, I can find excuses to keep on doing it. Thank you very much, I will see you again very soon.